Okay, so here's a question that you either do the second law and a bit of Newton's third law. We've got a person who is 60 kilos and they're pulling a crate, which is 40 kilos, across the floor. Both the person and the crate are accelerating that way at 0.1 meters per second squared to the right. So the person is pulling the crate with a force of 100 Newtons using the rope. And what is the friction on both? The, the crate and the friction on the dude. Okay, so let's do the crate first. That's an easy question. Right? Is there gravity on the crate? Yeah, for sure. Gravity is equal to 40 Gs, and the crate is resting on the ground, so there's a normal force. No problem. I don't know what the normal force is, so I'm going to put a little question mark because my teacher has convinced me that Fn is not always equal to Fg, even though I'm pretty sure it will be this time, but I'm going to leave it as a question mark. What other forces are there on the crate? Well, the person is pulling it to the right. He's pulling it using a rope, so I guess we should call it Ft, but if I called it Fa, it wouldn't change my answers, so it doesn't really matter too much. I'll call it tension, but of course, the box is sliding across the floor. It's slipping to the right. It's skidding to the right. So friction is going to try to stop it from sliding to the right. So there's got to be friction. He's accelerating to the right, so I'll call x to the right for the whole problem. I don't really need to do my y equation for anything, but I'm in the habit of doing it. Fn minus Fg is equal to Ma. Sorry, it's equal to zero because the thing is accelerating to the right, therefore it's not accelerating up or down. So since it's not accelerating up or down and there's only two forces, they've got to be equal and balanced. So therefore, Fn equals Fg. And I can see that, yes, this time Fn does equal Fg. It often does. It often does, but not always. Okay, back to the question. That's pretty straightforward. The x direction equation then is going to say that Ft minus Ff Ft minus Ff has to equal Ma, and therefore the force of friction equals Ft minus Ma. And the force of friction will be 100 minus 40 times 0.1, which is 4. So the force of friction on the crate is going to be 96 newtons. It's clear that I understand it's to the left, but I should always put a direction my final answer, so the force of friction on the crate is 40 newtons, sorry, 96 newtons to the left. That's pretty easy. What about the person? The person has a mass of 60 kilos. Is there gravity on the person? Obviously there is. What else is there? The person's resting on the ground, so there's got to be a normal force. And again, I don't know how big it is, but I'm not going to be at all surprised that it's equal. What other forces are there on the person? If I understand Newton's third law, then I know that if the person pulls on the box with a force of 100 Newtons, that the box has to pull on the person with a force of 100 Newtons in the opposite direction. And these two forces have to be equal because of Newton's third law. But looking at this diagram and knowing that the person is accelerating to the right then I understand, if I understand Newton's second law, that there's got to be a force to the right on the person. And it has to be bigger than 100 newtons if the person's going to accelerate to the right. And what force is there that could possibly be pushing this guy to the right? That's hard for some students to understand. It's actually going to be friction pushing to the right to make the person go. Imagine there was no friction. How would you pull through a box without sliding over to it? You wouldn't be able to. So the friction is actually causing the person to accelerate to the right. So again, it's definitely wrong to think that friction always opposes motion. It opposes slippage. In the crate's case, the crate is slipping to the right, so it tries to fight it. In the person's, place, person's case, if there's no friction, their feet are going to slip to the left. So friction is stopping their feet from sliding. And it's to the right. Do I need to do the y direction? No, not really, but Fn minus Fg is equal to zero, therefore Fn equals Fg. Okay, no problem. In grade 12, we'll use that equation to find Fn. I think we need more Caruana bars because I wouldn't want my teacher to think that I thought that the weight of this was the same as the weight of this.
coronavirus. In the x direction, what's the equation? So here's another place where the grade 11s who haven't really understood things go wrong. They're used to saying FA minus FF equals MA. But over here, it's not. It's FF because FF is in the positive direction minus FT that is equal to MA. Rearranging this, we see that FF equals MA plus FT, which is 60 times 0.1 plus 100. So the force of friction on the person is 106 newtons to the right. We use Newton's second law for both. We use third law to understand this. And we also need to understand third law if we're going to understand why the force of friction is to the right. Now, the interesting thing about this question, I guess I could have made it a little harder, if I asked you how hard does the person have to push on the ground? Because that, I think, would have confused a lot of people. Notice that the person pushes with 106 newtons to the right of line, to the left on the ground. If he wants to accelerate to the right with the box, he's got to pull the box with a force of 100 newtons with his arms, but he's got to push on the ground towards the box with a force of 106 newtons, knowing full well the Newton's third law will make that force reapply to him in the opposite direction, and he can keep accelerating. So the person pushes with 106 newtons left on the ground and with 100 newtons right on the crate. Notice that the person has to do both those forces. And that's not super obvious, but I hope it makes sense.